Chief Medical Officer, Director, Dancer, Mother. Dr. Beverly Cheryl Howard Crusher is many things, but one thing she isn't is lucky in love. Over seven seasons and four feature films of Star Trek The Next Generation, she has uh, several romantic trysts, and I'll go pretty wrong. Sure, she's hardly the only TNG character to lack anything resembling a successful long-term relationship, but Beverly still stands out. So today, we're going to talk about The Good Doctor's Four Paramours, try and understand why a beautiful, brilliant professional at the top of her game just can't get hers. These are the bad romances of Beverly Crusher. Now just to get it out of the way, Beverly's dead husband, Jack Crusher, does not count as a bad romance. We don't really know a lot about him other than he was a Starfleet officer, he was best friends with Jean-Luc Picard, he proposed to Beverly by giving her a book called How to Advance Your Career Through Marriage. They had a kid together, and Jack's death is kind of Picard's fault. And there's a lot to say about Beverly and Picard, but let's kick that can down the road. For now, what you need to know is that Beverly is a widow, she lost the one good dude in her life she knew she could rely on, and now she's raising her son alone while being the chief medical officer on a ship captained by the man who is partly responsible for her husband's death. And that colors all of her relationships. And her romantic relationships, well, they either get weird in a hurry or they don't get going at all. Like in Transfigurations, for example. Beverly catches feelings for a patient with amnesia she calls John Doe, Never mind the ethical conundrum of physicians dating their patients, John is ready to be with Beverly because he's going through some kind of physical transformation. But it's understood that once he gets that whole situation squared away, she and he will, you know, bounce a wow. Just one problem. John winds up transforming into a glowy body stocking, and uh, I think the subtle implication is that he doesn't uh, have the body parts to bow wow anymore? I mean, it's not a tragedy. Arguably, the worst thing to come out of it is some awkward mother-son real talk about love. Like, gross, dude, that's your mom. But this does set a weird precedent wherein Beverly meets someone and falls in love only to have it all go sideways and not, you know, like, horizontal sexy sideways. Which brings us to a dude named Odan in an episode called The Host, which is the only time we really see Beverly in a full-on romantic relationship. The Enterprise is taking Ambassador Odan to a planet to settle conflict, but he's spending most of his diplomatic energies on our girl Bev. Dr. Beverly. It's just Beverly. Yada, 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 there's an attack. We find out Odan is a Trill, and if you watch a lot of Star Trek, you know the Trill are a symbiotic relationship between a humanoid host body and a stomach worm? It's the first time we meet the Trill, though, so the rules are different than they wind up being with, say, Commander Dax on Deep Space Nine. For one thing, nobody in Starfleet knows the deal with the Trill until Odan gets injured. The stomach worm is basically the whole consciousness, not just half of a whole, and the worm can temporarily be placed in a human body. Which is what happens. The Odan host dies, and they put the worm into Riker. Beverly's confused. Riker is like a brother to her. But no matter, because Counselor Deanna Troy steps in and convinces Beverly to keep on going to Pound Town anyway. I don't want to dwell on this for too long, but even leaving aside the fact that Troy and Riker are supposed to be forever lovers, this is like really stunningly bad advice from a ship's counselor. Anyway, long story short, when Odan finally gets a new permanent host, it's a woman's body. Leaving aside the homophobia inherent in using same-sex relations as code for the audience to assume a relationship cannot continue, this is the second time in a row where Beverly falls for someone and they change in a fundamental and total way. And she says outright that she just can't keep it. Moving on to something less complicated. We may now talk about Sub Rosa, the episode where Beverly Crusher has wild orgasms thanks to her recently deceased grandmother's alien ghost cat. Wow. What a sentence. What an episode. What a whirlwind romance. The sensations were very real and extremely arousing. Beverly has been through some weird situations, but nothing can compare with the time she meets Ronan, a dude plucked 
straight out of a gothic romance novel, a man who's been satisfying the Howard women for generations and is now here to work his alien ghost candle magic on Beverly. How a family show got away with this in the early 90s, I will never know, but I thank them for it every day. Beverly, however, has nothing to be thankful for. Once again, a man is not who he appears to be. I mean, a stomach worm is one thing, but the family heirloom sex toy? Gosh, that's a, a lot. Rona turns out to be super controlling and abusive, and it's all downhill until Picard leaps in and coaxes Beverly away from an eternity of orgasms. What a hero? This conveniently brings us to Beverly's most well-known love, Captain Jean-Luc Picard. He was super jealous of Odan, and suspiciously around a lot during the whole John Doe thing, and that's because Picard has been crushing it, get it, since she was still married to Jack. Those feelings go both ways, and it comes up a lot over the course of seven seasons. I'm a woman. I haven't had the comfort of a husband. A man. But by the end, they don't get together. They reveal their mutual love and attached, where they can hear each other's thoughts, and Picard lays it on the line. But Beverly is still afraid. We get partial satisfaction in one alternate timeline, Beverly and Picard get married and then divorced, and in the books they get married too, but in the actual continuity, it just never works out. And it's Beverly who puts an end to that love story. Now, you could argue that Trek writers are not the best at writing romance, or women, and an audience full of people who hate romantic subplots doesn't help matters, but the end result is not so unrealistic. Beverly Crusher loses a husband, and then she dates a body sock, a tapeworm, and a candle, all of which bring betrayal and heartache. And as great as Picard is, their relationship will always be tainted by the memory of Jack, Picard's involvement in his death, and the feelings that predated that death. It's a bummer. But, you know, Beverly is a bomb queen, and there's plenty of fish in the sea. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, let Sci-Fi know because there is no shortage of bad romance and science fiction we can talk about. And I will. I have an unhealthy obsession. Thank you for being part of it. I'll see you next time.